Hello, my name is Mary Golf from My Season Life with Mary Golf. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. My channel is all about motivating, supporting, and encouraging black women over 50 to live our best lives. We spent so many years taking care of other people, none is time to focus on ourselves. So listen, I have recently relocated. I retired here in Panama and I'm taking advantage of all of the benefits of the Pensanada visa. So hey, if you're interested in following my journey and learning some tips on how you can too can retire in Panama, then please hit the like and subscribe button or if you just want to stay motivated and encouraged in your journey to wherever you may be hit the like and notification so you'll be notified when I upload new new videos because I have lots of stuff to share and I think I said new new twice but anyway you get the message hit the like and subscribe stay tuned for many videos many tips on how you can make your experience much more easier because I'm sharing things with you so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All right, so good luck on your retirement journey. Wherever you are in your journey, if you're just relocating, there's tips for you too. Stay tuned. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about my first 90 days of living in Panama. Uh, when I came from the airport, I was able to move directly into my apartment. And if you wanna find out how I did that, click on the link how to find a luxury apartment in Panama, and you will get all the details about that. So we traveled with about nine pieces of luggage, and we only paid for one piece of luggage. It's because we upgraded to uh, first class with Delta Airlines, like at the last minute. Uh, check your airline for upgrades at the last minute. It only cost us about $100, and we were able to save on all the excess baggage fees. Uh, something to also keep in mind is that you can bring more than just clothes in your luggage. Because I am a cook and I love to cook, so I brought some of my favorite pots and pans. I brought some knives. I brought an electric skillet. I bought other things like that that people would normally pack in a particular luggage. Okay, so once you move into your apartment, there's going to be several things that you're going to want to get done. Uh, immediately, you're going to want to set up your cell phone particular service and your internet and your Wi-Fi. You're also going to want to get a mailbox to determine, you know, how you get your packages uh, sent to you. And you're also going to want to set up a bank account. So let's talk about each one of those things. So once you move into your new apartment, you're going to want to get things set up. For instance, like your Wi-Fi, your internet, your cellular plan, your cable. Most of companies have packages. I am set up with Tigo. Um, I got that set up my first week moving into my apartment. Um, I had utilized a trusted, one of the trusted drivers from one of the Facebook groups to assist me uh, with taking my baggage from the airport. Um, he also um, said he had a contact in Tigo to help me set up my um, cell phone plan. So went with him to Tigo in you know waited to be waited on and then i uh, sat at the uh customer you know counter and basically he was telling the um uh, representative tigo rep that i was going to be coming on to his cell phone plan and i was like wait a minute am i hearing this right so basically the trusted driver was telling me or trying to persuade me that it would be much easier for me. I wouldn't have to do any paperwork if I just signed on to his plan to get my cellular service. Yeah, I'm gonna pause here for a second. Yeah, so I know a lot of people use drivers to get from A to B, but just make sure you're not being taken advantage of by you know overpaying or over over tipping. Um, I understand that everybody works hard and we're all trying to you know do the best that we can. However, I was not going to get on somebody that I don't even know. I just arrived in Panama, so why would I want to be connected to your particular cell phone plan? So. 
he basically tried to persuade me. And at that particular point in time, I became a little uncomfortable. And so I told him, let me think about this. And at that point, I dismissed him, no longer wanted his driver services. And uh, we were at the mall and I told him I was gonna look around myself and I'll just catch an Uber back to my apartment. So I have not spoken to the man since that. Um, what I did do was wait a couple of days, got my nerve up, <laughs> got Google Translate out and decided to go to Tigo myself. And basically, that's basically what I did. My phone was already unlocked. Um, I checked in at the receptionist to let her know what I wanted to do using Google Translate. Um, I sat and waited for my number to be called. And after an hour of waiting, I realized, wait a second, am I gonna really know when my number is called? <laughs> so I went back up to check in with the front and then finally they called my number and I was just kind of sitting there like, mm -hmm -hmm. and she was like, you, 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 it's your turn. So I think, thankfully I was able to get matched up with someone who spoke a little English and so we managed to get me straightened out. So I have a unlimited uh, service plan with Tigo for my cell phone. I also have Tigo for my um, internet Wi-Fi, and I also have Tigo for my cable. So I have like the whole package. So the lesson here is that don't always think that just because someone is recommended by someone else and they're so-called a trusted driver or a trusted expert that they're going to have your best interests in mind you want to make sure you follow your own instincts and make sure you are not overpaying uh, for services and not being taken advantage of all right okay so the next thing let's talk about is mailboxes okay so i started off uh, with a lot of people using mailboxes etc however i just found that their charges were like really excessive uh to mail packages now you need to have uh, a local address in miami because panama doesn't really have delivery service they don't have like postal a system in panama so if you want packages sent to you from like Amazon or your friends or family sending you things, you need to have a third carrier shipping company. So a lot of people were using mailboxes, et cetera, et cetera. I signed up as well. Uh, once again, I got this outrageous charge for just like a pillow. I think the shipping charge was like twice or three times more than the pillow. So I was like, okay, these people are just pulling prices out of the air. So I ended up going with a local shipping company called Zip Cargo, which is a local shipping company here in Panama. And they do fantastic service, fantastic communication. Uh, their prices are strictly by weight. There is no uh, surprises in the pricing. They're very communicative. Uh, when your package arrives, they're sending you emails. If you need to track your package, you can send them the tracking number. They'll let you know where the package is, if it's still in Miami. They'll let you know if the package is in customs. So it's a really good system and they also deliver door to door. So I've been using them for a couple of months now and I'm extremely happy with Zip Cargo and I will put the link in my description. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is you need to have a bank account. Now, I find it easier when I'm paying my bills, since I am renting an apartment here, I find it a lot easier to have a Panamanian bank account. Now, what I don't wanna do is keep having to send wire transfers to pay my, my bills, my monthly expenses. So what I do is, of course, I maintain my bank in the USA which I bank with USAA, a federal savings bank, which I've been banking with them for many moons since I was in the Air Force. I've banked with them for a very long, long time. So all of my money still gets deposited in my US bank. So what I do is because Panama, Panama, which is a good thing, they operate in US dollars, okay? So there's no conversion rate or anything like that. So I take my check, 
from my U.S. bank and I write a check to myself, okay? I take that check and I deposit it into my Panamanian bank account. Now, I bank with Benismo, there's Banco General, there's several banks that are here in Panama, but I use Benismo. So I deposit the check in my account, in my Panamanian account, and it takes approximately three weeks for the check to clear. Now, the check will clear sooner out of your USA, out of your USA account, and you'll also see it pending in your Panamanian account. So the money is all accounted for, but it just takes about three weeks for the money to actually appear in your actually in your bank balance. Okay, so you have to plan ahead when you're paying your expenses. However, it keeps you from having to open up additional accounts. It keeps you from wire transfer international bank fees. There might be a small transaction fee to process that check from the Panamanian account. However, it's nothing compared to international wire transfer fees. So every month, I just take a check from my US bank and I write it to myself, a check to myself, and I deposit it into my Panama bank account. And that's how I use the money to pay my expenses here in Panama. I also make use of the Benismo Bank app, which is very useful. I use that to pay not only my, uh, my rent, my utility bills, I also use it to pay other things. If, you, if you're looking to you know, have a class or something and they have a bank account with another bank, there's a whole list of banks that you can pay with your Benismo account. So the app is very user-friendly. It's all very easy to use. It's a pretty simple, straightforward process to set up your account. So keep that in mind that if you have a USA bank account, you can write a check to yourself and deposit it in your Panama account and don't have to worry about any international wire transfer fees. Okay, so those are some of the things that you should be doing when you check into your new apartment. Okay, so let's first take a look at some of the things that I bought with me. Did you know that you can travel to check luggage with knives in your check luggage? These knives all have covers on them and they were wrapped in like a bubble wrap and they travel with me because I love to cook. So I have to have my knives to chop stuff. No problems getting through customs and through TSA. No problems at all. Check bag, sharp edges have to be covered, okay? And they were double wrapped in bubble wrap. No problem whatsoever. This is an electric skillet that I brought with me in my luggage. It's very important to have an appliance to use those electricity because sometimes if they are working on the gas or doing a safety check, your gas can be cut off for weeks or even months. So it's best to have an appliance or a hot plate, something that you can cook your food with if the gas is turned off. Another appliance that I have that uses electricity is an air fryer that I bought here in Panama. Okay, so as you can see, this store is very similar to the Costco in the States. It's called Price Mart, and you can get all sorts of home goods, foods, all sorts of things in this store. I bought this particular air fryer because uh, the one I had at home was pretty beat up. But this air fryer is wonderful. It does all sorts of things. It also bakes, uh, which I make these mini uh, breads because I don't want to make a whole, you know, 
big um, loaf, but when you bake in this air fryer, everything comes out very moist and delicious, and it takes up less energy. Uh, it's very simple to use. And once again, this is an electric appliance that you can cook several meals in if your gas is uh, not working or they're doing a safety check in your building, you can still be able to cook your meals um, while you're in your house. So make sure if you don't like to cook like I do, make sure you get a hot plate. You wanna at least have a hot plate. If you're not into all of these fancy appliances, you can at least have a hot plate to use with your regular pots and pans. All right. Okay, another thing that's very important is also getting, walking around the neighborhood and getting yourself familiar with what's around in your particular community. Uh, yes, you can take Uber, but it's also best to actually get out, walk around your apartment and see what actually is there. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so one of the best things to do is to get out and walk around. Um, I was able to find a Pilates station, uh, grocery stores, gourmet stores, organic stores, kosher stores, um, banks, uh, restaurants, all of these things, parks, uh, walking paths, all of these things I found, home, uh, home goods stores, all of these things I found just by getting out and walking in the neighborhood. So that's something that's very important to do. This is a nail shop that's located in my neighborhood along with a coffee place that has great little sandwiches. There's also a local grocery store where I get my fresh flowers. Uh, there's a nice little park that is around the corner where people walk their dogs. You can also exercise there. There's really nice view um, around the water. And one of my favorite places is this Fruiteria. It's a fruit market in San Francisco has really delicious fresh fruit, uh, really good prices. Uh, you can get all sorts of things there. You can get eggs there as well, honey, all sorts of good stuff. And since I've been going there, I've started juicing on a regular basis now. So I'm juicing every week uh, because I have access to a ton of fresh fruits and veggies at a very economical price. So I'm eating better, eating cleaner uh, since I've been um, retired in Panama. Okay, so here we have me actually doing some juicing. I'm juicing some carrots here. Um, I normally mix the carrots with maybe a ginger or maybe a mint or something like that. And maybe something sweeter. It might be like an, a green apple, which is not too sweet, but maybe a little pineapple to just balance out the different flavors. But I don't really eat carrots on a regular basis. So juicing carrots is just a really good way for me to get all of the healthy benefits of eating some carrots. So um, I've been juicing every week now, so I'm drinking fresh juice just about every day. So um, that's something that you can also do while you're living your best retired life in Panama. So some of the other discoveries I discovered was a Pilates studio that was right around the corner from my apartment. I started taking Pilates lessons about three uh, days a week. I took classes. I also started doing some tourist stuff, like getting to know the local area. So I discovered, went to Old Town and Castle Viejo. I did the Panama Canal tour. And I also started looking for a massage place because I like to get massages so I found this really great uh, Thai massage place in Old Town Casco Vejo uh, which is very authentic uh, you're gonna pay a little bit for it because it's like in the tourist area but a very nice pleasant experience 
So something else that I discovered while in Panama that the weather was pretty hot and humid. So my body had to adjust to the climate and I decided that my hair needed some adjusting as well. So I decided to get a haircut my uh, first couple of months here in Panama. So having sister locks, you do have to keep up, you know, with your regular maintenance, but having extra long hair was a little too much for me. So this shorter length was much more easier uh, to maintain. And, you know, I kind of like the, the new look with a shorter length. So you have to do what works for you, of course, when it comes to your hair, black women and their hair. You have to find the best hairstyle that works for you in your particular environment environment and for me i just needed to cut my sister locks you can always search in your facebook groups for experts uh, that uh, can do hair in whatever particular location you are going to oh that looks good doesn't it <laughs> oh my gosh that's so nice Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> right. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about transportation. Now, I primarily use Uber to go from place to place. There's other things that you can use. Uh, there's InDriver, which is the local system, the local Uber system here. You can also use taxis. You can use the Metro or you can catch a local bus. But because Uber is just maybe two to three hours, not two to three hours, two to three dollars, depending on where you're going, it's very um, economical, very reliable. Um, I like using Uber because Uber is regulated. I don't have to exchange cash. Um, you can send someone your share your location. So you always kind of know where you are. Uh, the taxis are not regulated. Uh, they can charge whatever they want. You have to negotiate a price and they don't have the same standards. Uh, some of the taxis might be clean. Some of the taxis may be dirty. So I also don't like, you know, because I'm here uh, primarily by myself, I don't like getting in a taxi and no one knowing where I am because there's no way, uh, you know, to share your location. Yeah, I guess you can track yourself, but it's just a total unregulated system and the drivers can pretty much do what they want as far as I'm concerned, as far as charges. So why put yourself in that position when you can use a system that is regulated, it's enforced, it's all straightforward, there's no guessing or anything like that. So that, so for transportation, it's very easy uh, to get around here in Panama City. So wherever you're traveling to, make sure you look up different ways that you can get around as far as transportation. And if there's an Uber system, use it. If it's not, use the next best thing as far as a local system, but make sure it's something that's regulated, you know, by the particular country that you're in. So you don't want to put yourself in any positions to be robbed or anything like that. Hi, getting ready to go out to eat dinner. Have a great evening. Hope all is well. I'm standing in front of my uh, apartment building, waiting for my Uber. One thing that's also very important, what I think is one of the most important things, is building community. Now you can start building community prior to getting to whatever your location is by joining those particular Facebook groups and start interacting, interacting with people in that particular group. You might find something that you have somebody in common, start talking and engaging with them. So when you get to your new place, you will have already made those connections 
and you won't feel so so out of place when you show up for a meetup. I didn't know anyone when I first moved to Panama. In my first week, I went to a movie premiere and ended up meeting a nice group of ladies and have since started Black Women Expats in Panama, a community here in Panama where we get together on a monthly basis. So if something isn't happening in your community and you want to see it, go ahead and create it. I mean, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. So another thing that I enjoy while retiring in Panama is that Panama is close to so many other South American countries. So I went to visit Bogota, Colombia. It's my first time in Colombia. So of course I had to do some tourist things. Uh, we took a tour on a, uh, a trail. What do you call those things? Not a trail, a tram, yes. <laughs> a tram up to like the highest peak in Bogota, which you have to get used to the elevation while you're there. So that was some adjustment as well, but a very scenic, beautiful view uh, once you were up there. It was a very nice, nice trip. Stayed about maybe four days. Also took a food tour, uh, which I found out that Bogota has over 450 different fruits and veggies, and they're not really fruits and veggie eaters are mostly meat and potatoes. Also visited botanical gardens and of course went to eat at a lot of their great, great restaurants. So over to, overall, Bogota was a good trip. Another thing you want to do is make sure you're getting familiar with the local doctors um, in your particular area. Um, talk to other expats, do a search in other Facebook groups to see what recommendations are there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when you come to these particular countries. Just do your research. You know, if, if, if their question has not been um, asked in the particular group, then go ahead and say, hey, are there any recommendations? Because most of the time, there's somebody that's already been there, already done that way before you. So you can get like a list of resources and you can decide which one you're going to use. One thing about living in Panama is that you get to spend your retirement income on things that, hey, you probably always wanted to do. I always wanted to hire a personal trainer, so this is something that I look forward to every time I'm with Jorge. I do this around two to three times a week. And the good thing about it is that Jorge comes to my particular building. So I don't even have to go out to train. All I have to do is get dressed and go downstairs to the gym. So he comes to me. And uh, so that's just a nice little uh lifestyle change that I didn't have access to in the States. A lot of services come to your home if that's what you wish to do. So it's just one of the benefits of retiring here in Panama or wherever you're located. You're going to have access to things and services uh, in a particular country that you wouldn't necessarily uh, have in the states or it would be a whole lot cheaper in another country not that you wouldn't have access to because you'd have to pay a whole lot more for it in the states but you can still get it done here in another country and pay just a fraction of the price for probably not actually not for but for better service hi it is wellness wednesday and i just got back from working out with my private trainer. And I just wanted to remind you to make sure you get a wellness exam. Uh, you don't have to wait until you have a problem to go see your doctor. You can do a wellness exam. It's a preventative measure. Um, I went and got a wellness exam, um, a full physical. Um, I had the full lab work done, you know, getting all my levels checked. I went and got my blood test yesterday and had a urinalysis and a stool test. So I did a complete workup here uh, because I wanna make sure that I am as healthy and taking care of myself the best way that I can. 
So when is the last time you had a full, complete workout workup to see what your levels are, where you're, you know, where you need to do better, or you know, if you're doing great. So make sure you get a wellness checkup. The thing that I like about here in Panama is that you have direct contact with your doctors. Uh, you have your doctor's phone number. Um, I have to, uh, once I get my lab results, I just went yesterday, I have her direct email. I communicate directly with her. There's no you know, other middle man that you go through. You have a direct conversation with your doctor. So it's a real personal uh, connection. Um, I had a great conversation when I went and had my physical, you know, we not only talked about physical health, we talked about mental and emotional health as well. So it was an overall very good visit. One of the best visits I've had um, in a doctor's office because I felt like she cared, you know, about me too. And I wasn't just a patient in her office. So Panama Healthcare, so far has been really good for people that are worried about that. I have no concerns. I felt that, um, like I said, I was in good hands. And the fact that you have your direct doctor's contact, your communication with your doctor about your health directly. So that's a win-win for me. My physical was $60. And because of my um, discount, uh, retired discount, senior citizen discount, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the physical was $48. I also got a huge discount on my lab work. So even without me using any insurance, I mean, it was less than, um, I think like $200 for everything. Um, all of the full blown tests, my physical, everything was less than $200. So, hey. I do have Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's something that I can look into, you know, later on to figure out how I use that here. But I just wanted to go get it done. Uh, now that I'm working out on a regular basis now, and I want to make sure, like I said, I'm staying as healthy as possible. So do yourself a favor. Go get yourself checked out. Get a wellness exam and use preventative measures and make sure you're taking good care of yourself. Wellness Wednesday. So let's take a preview of my upcoming Bali wellness trip where I show you how to save tons of money on your airfare using your benefits of the Pensanada Visa in Panama. So if you wanna make sure you catch this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe so you can be notified when I upload new videos this is part one of my Living in Panama series, so stay tuned for some more videos. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mary from My Season Life with Mary Golf. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, My Season Life with Mary Golf. Now, hey, my channel is all about supporting, motivating, and encouraging black women over 50 to live our best lives. So if this is something that you're interested in, please hit the like and notification so you can get notified when I upload new videos.